What's up guys, welcome to GT Content, I'm Gary. The Supra is a hot commodity at this time and the aftermarket is trying to take advantage of this trend. We've seen multiple body kits and accessories already and well, there's one more to add to the market. It's from Sigma Advanced Racing Development and if you haven't heard of them, you've probably heard of Sard. It's a Japanese company with racing heritage and they have collaborated with Toyota in the past. But unlike those kits, this will be an actual car with the kit already on and making 500 horsepower. It's being called the Sard Supra. There will only be a total of 20 sold for the price of $120,000. A typical Supra is $50,000, so what are you getting for almost two and a half times the price? Of course, the wide body kit, which is three inches wider at the fenders. A new hood, six piston front calipers with upgraded rotors, 20 inch Alcon 20ER wheels, Bridgestone Potenza S007 tires, strut tower bar, anti-roll bars, adjustable suspension, ECU reflash, titanium exhaust, catalytic converter, and an upgraded Borg Warner turbo. Now, there are so many questions still that I wanna know. Is the body kit carbon fiber, fiberglass, or fiber reinforced plastic? Are the wheels custom? What offset? Is there wheel spacers? What's done to the interior? No one's talking about the interior. Is it stock? Will the body kit be offered by itself in the future? How come they didn't upgrade to two piston rear calipers? I may know the answer, but I want them to answer. How come there's no sexy Asian supermodel? The front end reminds me of a stormtrooper, so that may attract Star Wars fans. At a glance, it looks like an R8. The hood vents look to be functional, but I'm not too sure about the fenders and rear bumper. The side skirts look clean. I actually like how the side skirts are, but I'm also curious to see how they open and how they look when they're opened. And that also includes the gas cap. Will there be any clearance issues when these things are open? It's the details that should be provided if they're trying to sell a $125,000 car. When you look at the rear, it looks like it has a Camaro rear. The rear looks tacky with that black strip, but I guess that's what makes it unique, just like the wing and the front looking canards. Is the arrow actually functional? What about the weight? Most of these cars are show cars inspired by racing and there's no performance to back it up. I like how they're trying to be different, but there's also a reason things are done a certain way. The stock B58 turbo can make around 600 horsepower, so I'd like to know the specs of the Borg Warner they're using and its limitations because, you know, I'd like to future-proof myself just in case a Honda Civic starts making 500 horsepower stock in the future. 500 horsepower isn't anything to complain about, but if you're carrying more weight and drag, there may not be a performance gain compared to a regular Supra with 500 horsepower. So if this Sard Supra can beat an equivalent stock Supra with 500 horsepower on the drag strip and track, then I would say it's worth it. We've only seen specs at this point and no actual performance numbers. Otherwise, it's just a show car and if that's your thing, then it's fine. Not everyone is going to agree and appreciate on the same things. The next generation M3 is supposed to make 500 horsepower and if that engine option is available for the Supra, it may be a cheaper option with a factory warranty. You may not like the stock look, but at this point, you can do whatever you want in the looks department without having to worry about California emissions where I live. We've seen the launch edition, A91 edition, maybe we'll see a TRD edition. I've got my fingers crossed if it'll be around $60,000. As far as performance per dollar, I'd stick with the stock look for $50,000, throw in $10,000 for power mods, and make around 800 horsepower for less and still be able to add in suspension and wheels of my choice with money remaining. I know, easier said than done. <laughs> of course, it won't be as unique, but that's what I do. There's not much to complain about with a stock car because, you know, it came that way. There are just too many unknowns for me to want to spend $125,000. Maybe if it was a Toyota whatever edition, then I'd probably consider it a little more. There's already a lot of mixed feelings about the 5th generation Supra, and it looks like the Sard Supra just contributes to it. But you know what? Enough about me. Let me know what you think about the Sard Supra in the comments section below, and we can continue this conversation. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.